Good afternoon, this is your friend Angel over at Palm Chevrolet. Today is November 29th and I'm bringing you something that is like finding a needle in a haystack. This is a 2023 Camaro ZL1 convertible and it's available right now here in our dealership. It hasn't been sold yet, which is amazing. Made it all the way to the showroom floor and I got it out of the showroom floor just to show it to you guys. It's, it's a beautiful thing to have a Camaro ZL1 convertible on the lot. It's a fantastic vehicle, of course, 650 horsepower, making it the fastest four-seater convertible in the whole world. I don't know if anybody made another car like this, uh, but at the time of its launch, it, this was the fastest four-seater convertible. And you can see uh, how they mean business here with the front end of the car. The grill is kind of a 3D. It comes out of you and it looks very menacing. Uh, you can notice uh, this car has radiators all the way on the front because it's a supercharged car uh, we also have the flow tie which increase the airflow to your engine when you're going uh, <laughs> really fast and we have air ducts to redirect the air from the front rotors uh, the car that has the most radiators in history was the bugatti veyron with 10 radiators but that car has 16 cylinders eight turbos and over a thousand horsepower I'm saying that because the Sear one has actually 11 radiators if you buy an automatic, which is the case here, uh, making it the car with the most amount of heat exchangers or radiators in the industry. You know, to keep things cool, of course, supercharged are benefit from cold air all the time. So there you have it. Uh, when you get a Sear one, you get these huge Brembo brakes with six piston calipers on the front and forged wheels front and back. All the wheels are 20 inch wheels. Uh, but of course the one on the rear are wider you can notice in the back we also have uh, CL1 specific rotors uh, or calipers and they actually uh, are four pistons in the back six pistons in the front as an option we opt for the carbon fiber fuel door which looks pretty nice you can see the back of it is absolutely amazing uh, when you see this car on the road you notice the CL1 because the exhaust is kind of <laughs> it's kind of big <laughs> to say the least and you will see the, the logo here this is seal one as well uh, amazing vehicle it really is so let's show you what this is about i'm gonna let you guys uh, turn up your volume the radio your headphones put the bass on it's about to <laughs> come to life so the first thing we do we hit the lock button and then we hold this button for four seconds you ready? <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Lock and hold. There we go. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It doesn't get more American than that. You're talking zero one. You're talking uh, <laughs> all the goodies are here, my friend. So you can open your trunk by pushing this little button here. You can do it from the key fob or from inside the car. But very important, when you have a convertible, this piece has to be up in order to operate the, the top. So it's been like that for many years in other cars, but I just want to uh, let you know, just in case you find yourself renting one of these and you don't know what's going on with the top. When you put this down, it's going to look like this. And then you have, of course, more cargo space. You cannot fold the seats down like you do on the coupe. The convertibles are sealed. Uh, but very important, this has to be up to operate the, the, the top. And you can notice the opening here is not that big. 16 cubic inch in total not the largest trunk but of course it's a sports car and it's nice to have one in a convertible which is, some cars don't even have one you can notice here this is the battery protection pack which is just a trigger charger for the battery if you're going to store this car for winter or something the battery stays charged and of course like every other chevy we explain you how to escape from the mafia you just run in that direction for your life this glows in the dark you just pull it and that's how you escape if you wonder what this is, this is your FM antenna. And if you wonder what the FM antenna goes, it actually goes here. It, the spoiler is the FM antenna on the Camaro. This right here is your satellite antenna for Wi-Fi, OnStar, etc. But the antenna is actually integrated on the spoiler on all convertibles. And this is because Camaros have the antennas in the back windows. That's why you don't see a stick like the Mustangs. Uh, but when you pull the top down, you will lose your signal. So that's why we have a, a spoiler antenna. And it's been like that since 2012. It never changed that. It's pretty cool, cool, fish, cool fact about the Camaro. And of course, now that we have the top ready, the car running, we can press 
our favorite button on the key fob, which is this one, and that lets you open your top. Very important, I have to unlock the car first, and then hold this button, and then this will happen. Just like that. It only takes about 15, 16 seconds, and you can do it up to 25 miles an hour. I let go of the button, so I have to, there we go, here it again, sorry. <laughs> You gotta keep holding it like this in order to operate. If you let it go, it stop. And this is cool because they do it for safety. See how nice it is? In the old one, you had a latch that you had to get loose. So no more latches for the top, which makes it really nice. Look how cool this is. Everything is in sway. The steering wheel, the seats, the door panels, even the knee pads on the, da on the dashboard there. And of course we have the Recaro seats for the Camaro ZL1 with that red stitching. It's called the French red stitching all around the car. Red seat birds to combine with that. You can see the wireless charger here. It says Camaro right there. So when you pull the top down, that's what you see. It looks really, really nice. This is the front of the car right here. Now, uh, it's worth mentioning, Camaros now have blind sport alert, backup sensors and stuff like we never had before. So. And this is how it looks when it's running. You have your daytime running lamps. They're gonna look flashing on my camera, but in real life, they're not flashing, they're solid. Uh, it looks really menacing, you should see how it looks. Uh, one thing I like about the zero ones is that they don't have the mustache, they don't have the light bar that goes on top of the grill. So they keep it old school, as far as that goes. But old school works for me, man, it is, it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, you can notice, we also have as an option, this is called the exposed carbon fiber. The hood itself is made out of carbon fiber, but they don't charge you if it's painted. They charge you if it's exposed. So you have an exposed carbon fiber hood in here. Very nice. We also have side skirts. You can see them right there. They completely function. And this is how it looks with the top down. It's absolutely gorgeous. So let's get in it and show you what's inside. There's a lot of goodies in here. Uh, when you open your door in your car, very important, you hit the button first. And then the door opens. That's how you lock it too. This is your driver's side door. Door panel is covered with suede here, here, and the armrest. This area. Uh, we also have both stereo, memory seats, power windows, power locks. We have these key plates. It says Camaro right here. Looks super nice. And of course, we're gonna sit here on this beast. And even though it's running, you know, I, I cannot drive it. You cannot just take off this car. You have to hit the brake with the key in your pocket or with you and then hit the start button and that's how all Chevy products operate when you have a when you have a uh, you gotta mute that <laughs> when you have a car with the uh, memory seats it memorizes the position of your seats uh, position of the mirrors etc uh, so in this case when you start the car everything will change to that now I'm gonna close the top here real quick just to show you how that operates you just hold this button here and then there she comes. <laughs> yeah, you can do this up to 25 miles an hour, as I mentioned. And it only takes about 15 to 16 seconds to do. That's it. There we go, you just roll back the window. Bada bing, bada boom, we're good to go. And when it's complete, it will say motion complete right there. Now, interesting enough, when you gotta raise your windows, there's two windows here, of course, but there's only two switches. Wait a minute, it's four windows and two switches. How will, you, how will you go about that? So, very simple. You hit the rear button here, and then you raise your window. Now your back windows are up. You go back to the front windows, and then you push here, and both windows are up. And now the entire car has the windows up, but you have to utilize three switches. I don't know why they didn't add another switch. <laughs> that would have solved the problem, but that's how they work. And it's been like that since they came out. This is your uh, mirror controller for the uh, left and, and right mirror. You also have a heated steering wheel. You got the buttons here for cruise control, very easy to use. You just turn it on, then hit set. You can see the symbol coming on and off right there when you turn it on. We also have uh, favorite stations or favorite songs if you want to skip a song. And the right side you have volume buttons. And then you have your driver information center. So the steering wheel also says zero one. It's really, really cool. Of course, Camaro. <laughs> so if you want to operate your uh, driver information center or DIC, you just have to use these controls here. You just go down here to show your trip A, trip B. You can see your uh, fuel range. You can see your all life. You can see your tire pressure. You can see your best fuel economy. Uh, 
timer. You also have a speed limit. It shows you the speed limit on any road thanks to the navigation system. It shows you the engine hours and back to the speedometer. Now, if I go here to the left, I access other menus. See that over here? So right now I'm gonna access the performance menu. And this is the fun stuff if you go to the track. This is lateral G-Force. Then we have all around G-Force. Then we have uh, a zero to 60 timer. I'm not gonna use that. <laughs> and then you have a lap timer. We have oil temperature, oil pressure. We have battery voltage, uh, transmission fluid temperature. We have tire temperature. So if you go do a burnout, instead of normal, it's gonna say hot. And when they're hot, they're ready to be sticky. <laughs> and that's when you do your launch control. And then we're back to the G-Force. Now, if I go here to the left, I can access radio, navigation, phone, or change my options. If I go to options though, you can disable, uh, but this is for launch control, sorry. Uh, you can change the unit to kilometers per hour instead of US, or you can change the team. So if I go here now to the right, I can change my team to technology. Just hit select right here. And now everything is gonna change to that. I don't like it, so I'm gonna get it back to the standard view. But if you wanna change your standard view to the technology, you're more than welcome to, it looks pretty cool. Then you have your uh, pages, you can modify, eliminate pages if you don't wanna see that many, you can change it. Now if I go here to navigation, and I'm in route using the navigation, right now it says demo mode on, I'm gonna hit continue, I'm gonna hit navigation, so now you can see it shows me some information on the nav, and if I'm in route somewhere, I don't have to be distracted looking this way, I can just look this way. Now if I wanna be even less distracted, I can just pay attention to the heads up display, which is being projected on the windshield, you use these three buttons to control your heads of display. You can move it up, and I'm moving it up. You can't see it because that truck is white, but yeah, it's right there. If I move it down to the tire, you can see it moving. And you can see, change the information you, you're looking at. So if you don't want to see RPMs or anything like that, you can change it to just miles per hour, or what's playing on the radio, uh, what, uh, this is a compass, and then RPMs again. My favorite is the RPMs by far. I'm gonna get this back to the information center, which was the speedometer, and you can see the car only has seven miles. We just got it last week. Oh my God, this is a blessing to have this. What a comfortable car. Uh, in the uh, controls for the AC, uh, you can accelerate your fan speed using these buttons, but if you wanna control the temperature, all you do is rotate the vents. You can I change it to 68. I'm gonna get it down to 62, and here, you can have do the same on the passenger side. So. Passenger and driver can have separate temperatures. You can see here cool seats for the passenger, high, medium, low, off, and heated seat as well, high, medium, low, off with three levels. Then we have uh, heated seats for the driver and cool seats for the driver. I'm gonna keep it cool because it's getting hot. This is Florida. Right now it's 73 degrees, not too shabby. Your steering wheel telescope, and that means not only you can move it up and down, it goes in and out. So you can push it away from you, you can pull it towards you, Whenever you find your favorite position, you just lock it in place right here. And it stays in place and never move. You have pattern shifters. It's worth mentioning, this is a 10-speed transmission. Uh, we have a new shifter. This is an option we order with a carbon fiber. So the shifter can be here to be in drive, or you can put it here where it says minus and plus. So you can upshift gears here. It says M1. It's denying the shifting right now because we're not moving. Or you can downshift by putting it down. So you can use this or utilize your pattern shifter. Either way, they, 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 they will both work. Uh, now, in the center console, we have traction control button. We never shut that off, unless you just wanna do a burnout. And then we have driving modes. We have four driving modes on the ZL1. Uh, right now, you can see the S. We are in sport mode. And I'll open the door to show you the difference. Uh, first, we're gonna go to tour mode, which is the mode you use to relax and drive. And this is how it sounds. Eh, not too loud if you ask me, but if you change this to sport mode, now we're talking a little louder, just a little louder. Let's see. <laughs> you can also hear the supercharge. And of course, this is uh, computer controls. I cannot rev it all the way, but my red line is at 6,500 RPMs. Most Chevy engines are like that because they're push rod engines. And you have a boost gauge right here to show you what kind of boost you make. There you go. <laughs> the supercharged. It's ironic. I love to have it here. My car had it down there and the 13 that I have. Uh, another cool thing about the vents, you can close them and open them right here. 
in the AC vents. And speaking about driving modes, we had sport mode, but we also have track mode. <laughs> Going back to the modes, uh, the steering wheel here is really hard. So this is something you should use only on the track. It tied up the suspension. This one has a magnetic drive suspension. The brake is more sensitive and the gas pedal is more sensitive. Listen to this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So track mounts means business. Now, what doesn't mean business, you go here to snow and ice. And snow and ice is really quiet too. You see, you don't hear anything. And you can notice how everything changed here to snow and ice. If I go back up to track mode. Now, this is changing to like yellow. Yellowish, you know, the same color you see here for track, and the same is happening on the radio. On the top of the radio, change colors. You can see it there, door panels, and right here is, it's actually better to see. You can see the cup holder color changing. Now, if I go up to the sport mode, everything now changed to red. You can see the red there, red there. This is what we call ambient lighting. You can see the red on, the, on my door panel here as well. Now, if you don't want it to change at all, you can just choose your color we have over 25 colors to choose from right now we're in tour mode you know, everything changed to blue and to do this we just hit the house button move to the right and just access ambient lighting and here it lets you choose any color so if you want to have pink no problem you go pink look <laughs> now we are pink oh sorry did i hit pink yeah i did <laughs> there we go so now everything is pink <laughs> pink here pink there uh, over 25 colors to choose from. Right now I had it in link to drive modes, and that means it will change when you change your drive modes here. Uh, but yeah, you can choose demo mode and it will change automatically. You can control your climate from the stereo, from the screen, instead of using the analog buttons. But you cannot control heated seats or cool seats on the, on the screen. It has to be these physical buttons. Then we have uh, apps. We have an app store with over 20 apps to choose from. We started out with three apps, so now we have a lot more, including Spotify, Pandora, news app, you name it. We got a bunch of them. Uh, we also have our navigation system, and this is integrated in the car, but aside from that, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, completely wireless. You no longer have to plug it in. It will display the image of Google Maps or Apple Maps or Waze on the radio. But if you don't have a cell phone with you, no problem. You can use our GPS, it works perfect. It got pinched too soon, just like it does in Google Maps. Very easy to use, and uh, you know it's completely free. It's part of the car, so it comes with the car. <laughs> then we have uh, access to your phone. We have access to the radio as well. And these are shortcuts, so you can access all those options uh, more quicker. See, so you can just go navigation, climate here. See the difference of real guns. I gotta mute this because of copyrights, of course. But we have XM radio. We have. Uh, uh, it lets you download the app for music such as Spotify, etc. So you got plenty of places to listen to music here. And the stereo is nice. We have, of course, Bose stereo going on, which is great. Uh, and Bose has always been my favorite. Because it, Bose always had some bass. That's what I like about it. <laughs> Over here, we have a 12 volt outlet, just in case you need to put a radar detector. And we also have our parking brake, which is now a switch. It used to be the handle you just pull when you activate it. You would say park brake set, and you would have a little park logo on the top. To deactivate your parking brake, it's like putting the handle down. So you just hold the brake pedal and push this down, and that's it. That releases your parking brake, and it would say park brake release. Uh, also, we have a center console here. We didn't actually can open it. It's not as big as it looks. <laughs> it only had that little storage here. But it has two USB ports and an auxiliary jack. So it has some amenities in there. Not too many, but it has some. <laughs> And this is our wireless charger in the back seat because why not? <laughs> I don't know. Most cell phones won't fit in here, but it is there if you need it. Uh, you can use the USB ports, of course. Passenger seat offered the same amenities with the stitching and the Z1 logo, the French stitching everywhere. You got your knee pads too on the passenger side, which feels really good. And if you're on the track, you know, your knee's always hitting this. So that, that feels really nice here with the suede. And the sway in the steering wheel, it feels really nice too. I have to admit, it, it is really nice. Now, talking about the mirrors or visibility, we can see we have a mirror here that shows you, well, the back seat and the back window. That's all you can see. But if you really want to see what's behind this car, all you have to do is flip the switch. Now, notice this. If I put the car in reverse, I have a backup camera. This is not a backup camera. This is a camera that is mounted 
on the spoiler and it stays on all the time. You don't have to put it in reverse like this one. This one is by the license plate. This one is by the spoiler. So that's why those trucks look much taller here <laughs> than they are. They look higher. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can change, uh, you can make it darker, you can make it brighter. Uh, you can change uh, zoom, you can zoom in, okay, you can zoom out. You can also tilt it. So if I hit ch uh, the check mark again, it'll allow me to lower the view or raise it up a little bit so you can see those trucks behind us. Very, very nice. Uh, of course, you can have a mirror again or a monitor. It's your choice. Now, when you're backing up on a CA1, we have a rear cross traffic alert, uh, which works 65 feet. Uh, to both sides of the guard. So you can see it start alerting me. And then this little sonar pops up and it tells me how close I am from the objects here. And the closer I get, the more it's gonna beep. Now it's telling me, hey, you're gonna hit the corner of the bumper there. And then you have the warning sign still yellow. But as I get closer, that warning sign will get bigger. See, it's growing up in size. And it gets to the point where it said, no, you better stop. Man, I'm getting really close. I don't want that. Can I get any closer? Let me see. <laughs> I don't want to risk it. Let me go forward. So yeah, it's there. That's how it operates. Quite easy to use, right? Uh, this gets time to get used to, but trust me, you will see a hundred percent better on on the monitor than you can see in the mirror. Uh, it's a thing of beauty, my friend. Absolutely. Now we're gonna pop the hood of this beauty to show you what's under the hood. It's a little surprising there. Let me show you. Uh, you still have to <laughs> reach it all the way down there. That. That never changed on this. <laughs> All right, so let's pop the hood on this beast, the monster, the one and only, zero one, the zero. <laughs> and kaboom, there it is. So this is the LT4 supercharged 6.2 liter engine out of a CO6 Corvette. So, of course, the new CO6 don't have a supercharged engine anymore. This was only produced until 2019 for Corvette. But they're still building it for Camaro at the Bowling Green factory when they build a Corvette. And this is the proof right here. You can see Performance Build Center. These engines are assembled by hand. And this is the name of the mechanic or the engine builder, Steve Selberg. Thank you very much for doing this to us. <laughs> it looks amazing. And you can see it says LT4. The original motor for the SS would be an LT1. LT4 would be the supercharged engine. You can see the pulley for the supercharged here. And of course, there's a lot of tricks to this. You can put a smaller pulley. You, you know what to do. But 650 horsepower, 650 pound-feet of torque, 11 radiators, 10-speed transmission. I mean, this thing is ready as it gets. And they don't, it's done right, of course. And you can see the performance batch right there as well. You can notice we have Dex coolant. Dex coolant is the one you use for heavy-duty trucks, and it's good for 150,000 miles. And so you can see the hood, uh, these heat extractors are completely functional to suck the heat out of the car. And so we use a lot of air that flows into the car to cool down all the components on the LT4, uh, it, which is noticeable. Uh, it was overheating, especially the transmission on CO6. They have to increase the size of the inner coolers uh, on the case of the CO6. and the case of the CO1, that never happened. Uh, but it, it is an engine that will run hot if you don't have those components in check. Uh, so, there you have it. We also have the exposed carbon fiber, uh, which is really nice with the ZL1 batches right there. It looks super cool. And I'm glad the sun is coming out finally. Uh, I just made a video in Spanish. And we have some sunlight, so the benefits from that. I hope you guys <laughs> can see what I'm seeing here. I mean, let me walk around again one more time now that we have some sunlight. Just to show you how it looks. Sorry about the ambulance. Uh, we have a lot of hospitals here, so this is something you hear every day going by. <laughs> and we also have a lot of retired people here, so there's a lot of car accidents. <laughs> but there you have it. There you go with the sunlight, finally. There's your money shot. Let me, let me get lined up here so you guys can take a nice screenshot of that. Boom, with the American flag. I mean, it doesn't get any more American than this. Come on, well, you gotta buy a Mustang convertible or a Camaro convertible, but the Mustang doesn't come like this, you know. And then the Charger and the Challengers, they announced they're out. So they quit the game of their muscle cars, and now they're going electric. Same story here. This is something you might not see in the near future, so I'm glad 
I had the opportunity to show it to you. Look at that, it just came out in the head like beautiful. So let's talk about pricing, which is what everybody wants to know. Oh, there is the sun. It's finally out completely. Let me, let me get you another shot because I'm nice. <laughs> let me get back here with the, there we go. The flag is flowing, the sun is shining. Oh my goodness, what a machine, man. This is, this is you, yeah, you gotta make a poster of this. If you do, send me the info. I, I leave my, in the description of the video all my information. In case you want to swing at this, let me know. I can make it happen. We ship nationwide as well. I just shipped a car to uh, Rhode Island a couple years ago. And I did one to South Florida just a couple weeks ago. So there you have it. Now, here's the sticker or window sticker 2023 Camaro Sear 1 convertible. The exterior is black with the interior jet black with red accents. 6.2 liter supercharged V8, 10 speed automatic transmission. Base price on this beast is $72,700. $72, Plus, we had to add the gas guzzler tax. As you can see, it's not very good in gas in that department with 13 on the city, 21 highways, 16 combined. So they charge you $2,100 penalty for that. You get a 10 speed transmission for $1,595, the exposed carbon fiber for $600. The navigation system for only $4.95. Then we have over here the black wheel locks and lug nuts, which is nice, $3.25. We have the black fuel door with exposed carbon fiber inserts, that's $2.95. The red seat belts are only $1.95. Battery protection package, $1.85. And we have a chief knob with carbon fiber appear appearance cap, $155 for a total of $5,945 in options. Then we have uh, a summary of the price. Uh, Subtotal here, 78645 plus the destination charge for a total of $80,040. And of course, the infamous market adjustment that everybody's talking about. Now, this dealership never done this in the past up until a year ago, uh, but it's not too crazy. Like I see a Honda, uh, type R with a $30,000 markup, something crazy like that. This is $4,995, so it goes from eighty dollars to $85,035. Not a huge deal. I'm not a huge fan of it either because I don't even get paid on those, but uh, it does go mostly in your trading if you have a trading. So at the end of the day, you're getting a piece of history, a unique car, fastest four-seater convertible in the whole world. And I don't know if there's another car with four seats and a soft top convertible that goes that fast. You let me know if you find one that is faster or at least in this segment. When it came out, I know it was for sure because they were bragging about it. That's how I know. <laughs> so I hope you like my video. Uh, most of my videos are in Spanish. I try to do as many in English. This case is special because of course it's a super American icon. So I had to make it in English. First time I made a video in a Camaro in English, which is amazing. I'm, I'm getting better at this. The accent, still, I'm still working on it. My wife's from Ohio, so it takes time to get rid of it. But <laughs> as you might know, English is my second language. Uh, so don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my videos. I'm going to keep bringing more now that I'm back walking since I had a little accident a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and there you have it, my friend. I hope you like it. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way, and enjoy the rest of the week. It's the end of November, so we start in December in a couple of days. I hope you guys behave. And maybe, who knows, maybe this Santa Claus will bring you this. Put it on the, I, I can put it under a Christmas tree. You let me know and I do it. <laughs> Take care, guys. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye-bye.